Thank you, Paddy, and good morning, everyone. And it's a pleasure to be able to join you here this morning for a, a short period in what looks like a, a very interesting agenda you have for your conference this year. I think we could all agree that policing is an ethically demanding profession. Uh, police officers length and breadth of the country respond to challenging and dangerous situations every day throughout the course of their career. These situations can have a major impact on the people's lives that they are dealing with and often involve officers going above and beyond the call of duty in carrying out their role. One of the privileges I have as Cabinet Secretary for Justice is getting the opportunity to recognise and to thank officers for the work that they do. I recently had the pleasure of attending the Scottish Police Federation's Bravery Awards, an opportunity to recognise the skill, dedication and the bravery of so many of our officers. Too often, skill and dedication and bravery that can be taken for granted. Public confidence is rightly dependent upon, the, upon those individuals demonstrating the highest degree of personal and professional standards in their behaviour when they're dealing with such challenging circumstances. And we know that because of their efforts, confidence in policing in Scotland remains strong. So when we look at the issues of professionalism in policing, it's important that we should also recognise that we start from a position of real strength here in Scotland. There's been much discussion in recent times about leadership in uh, policing in Scotland and whilst I accept it's absolutely right that there is crucial, a crucial public service such as policing should be subject to public scrutiny, I can't help but think that some of the discourse at times has been somewhat ill-judged. Clearly leadership in an organisation such as Police Scotland cannot rest on the shoulders of uh, one individual or even a handful of individuals. As important as Chief Officers are, and in Police Scotland we have a talented cohort of such officers, leadership must exist in all ranks of the police service if it is to be effective. And be in no doubt, policing in Scotland is effective. I'm as confident as ever in the professionalism and dedication of the many thousands of police officers and staff who provide an essential day-to-day -day leadership in communities across our country. It's their efforts that have delivered the safer society that we all now enjoy. Of course, nothing ever stands still, and leadership across all aspects of policing will continue to be crucial as the service seeks to meet the changing demands and the threats that we face. But I believe that we can look forward with confidence. In Policing 2026, we have a strategy which sets the direction of travel and will sure ensure that Scotland continues to benefit from a modern, responsive and sustainable police service. The detailed analysis and consultation which underpinned this strategy simply reaffirms the core role that policing plays not only in responding to crime but in promoting wider well-being in our communities. Officers and staff play a crucial role and of course an increasing role in working with and supporting the most vulnerable members of our society. And of course the service needs to evolve if it is to do so effectively as it moves forward. This means our service, strengthening its links with other aspects of the public service and its partners, ensuring that the response that we offer is not reflective of organisational silos that we so often can find ourselves working within, but of the needs of those individuals who seek its support. 
For Police Scotland, it also means building on the good work which is already being undertaken through, for example, the rollout of the risk and vulnerability training that has been provided to call centre staff who are so often the first point of contact for those who are in crisis. Or the training in mental health and suicide prevention that has been delivered right across the service to all officers up to the rank and including inspectors, with Police Scotland being amongst the first police service in the UK to deliver, deliver such a comprehensive training programme. 2026 also recognises the need to revisit the shape of the police workforce if we are to meet those new challenges effectively. But the answer can't simply be about more officers, although they will still be the backbone of our community policing. Instead, we need to also make sure that we have the specialists from all walks of life bringing new technical and operational experience and insight to the service. 2026 is the latest step in the evolution of policing in Scotland. The establishment of the single service has opened up access to a set of national specialist capabilities that allow us to respond more effectively to some of the most complex societal problems that we face. Be that terrorism, child protection or human trafficking. Whilst investment in areas such as forensic science ensure that the police and our court service in Scotland can benefit from the most advanced analysis possible. Of course, as policing continues to change, the new ways of working will pose different questions about ethics and there will always be the need to review core policing practice to ensure that we are recognising and protecting the human rights of those who we are serving. The biometrics field is a very tangible example of that. It's an area that is evolving rapidly and policing 2026 sets expectations for greater use of new technologies to increase officer efficiency and to also support operational response. Oversight of the use of data needs to keep pace with those changes and that's why I've established an independent advisory group on biometrics chaired by John Scott QC to now consider how we can consider biometric data and how it's captured, used, stored and disposed of. This is just the latest example of our commitment to continuing to deliver what is, importantly, to deliver an ethically driven model of policing here in Scotland, one which builds on the founding principle of policing by consent, which is a hallmark of our existing system. We've already introduced some key legislative changes, one of the most significant being that of the Criminal Justice Scotland Act 2016, which introduces a regular custody review and improved access to legal assistance as a key aspect of the new legal provisions within the Act. Whilst the Act also covers the practice of stop and search, an issue that lies at the heart of that delicate balance that needs to be struck between keeping people safe while also protecting the rights of individuals. These are the foundations in, what, in which Police Scotland will seek to build to take forward Policing 2026 and make it a reality. I know that next week the service will be taking forward an implementation plan for the strategy to the SPA board, <coughs> setting out the practical steps that they intend to take in order to create a service fit for the future. That plan needs to deliver practical benefits for communities and, importantly, provide practical support to frontline policing, giving our police officers the tools that they need to do the job to which they are so committed. Officers and staff wellbeing must be at the core of any approach within the service, and I particularly welcome the direct involvement of Deputy Chief Constable Ian Livingston in shaping the services plans 
in this area. A strong Scottish Police Authority is also crucial to the effective delivery of policing in Scotland. And the new chair will play a central role in driving the organisation moving forward. A focus on systematically engaging local interests uh, in national governance and in strengthening the profile and organisational effectiveness of the authority represent important steps. And we should all support her and her board in their efforts. And I know that you'll hear from Susan Deakin shortly. All of these developments, I believe, demonstrate the continued commitment of this government and our partners to delivering a police system which will not only meet the needs of those in its service, uh, but also those it seeks to serve. It's a commitment that will be borne out in this afternoon's budget statement, which, as ever, will seek to protect and enhance our public services in Scotland that serve us so well. So, in closing, can I say that I want to take this opportunity to thank you for taking part in this process and helping to deliver a first-class police service here in Scotland and your continued efforts to make sure that we strengthen on the good work that's been taken forward so far. I've got no doubt that as we move forward we will continue to see policing in Scotland being strengthened as we move forward and I very much hope that you find the conference a productive and helpful programme over the course of the day. Thank you very much.